Should you get an iPhone 13 in 2024? Well, if you ask me, I'm still using this as my primary device. And on top of that, I don't intend to upgrade it anytime soon. I probably will be getting the iPhone 17 Pro when it comes out. I want to use it for one and a half years more. The iPhone 13 is still up for sale. So if you wanted to save a few bucks, you can actually get that. It's very similar to iPhone 14. The only visible difference is the notch. Well, Apple replaced that with another gimmick called the Dynamic Highland. If you don't mind the notch, then it's basically the same device in terms of value. So let's dive in for a more detailed review of the iPhone 13 after two years. My name is Prithviraj and let's get started. Here's the specs in case you forgot. This is the Geekbench score for fellow nerds like me. Before we even begin, let's talk about the second hand market for a moment. If you are looking to get the iPhone 13 second hand, then make sure the battery health is at least more than 90%. The battery health of my device is 87% now. It sometimes lasts an entire day on a single charge, but the battery drains really, really fast. I attend a lot of concerts and events. In situations like that, I realize how bad my battery is. In concerts and music festivals, there are a lot of people. Hence, the network reception gets reduced. Your iPhone will constantly search for network coverage, draining your battery really fast. And don't forget that you'll be shooting a lot of videos as well in concerts, thereby draining your battery even more, and that too, very fast. Hence, I wanted to point this out at the start. Make sure the battery health is at least over 90%. That way, you'll be able to get almost a full day of charge with casual usage. But the resale value of the iPhone 13 is slowly taking a dip. So make sure you keep that in mind if you're looking to sell your iPhone 13. My average screen time nowadays is like 2-3 to three hours and I'm really happy about that actually. Now that the battery is out of the way, Let's talk about the software experience. I'm currently running on the latest version of iOS as of today, which is iOS 17.2.1. I must say, it just works. Period. It's my primary device, I've been using this phone for everything. And so far over the years, I haven't faced any lags and stutters. I've faced a few situations where the apps kind of crashes abruptly, but those were very rare to be honest. Overall, I had no issues in that aspect. It again just works. Sometimes I do feel like upgrading my phone just right now. There are two primary reasons for that. The first one is that I'm super jealous of the USB Type-C on the new iPhone 15. But yeah, I think I can control my emotions and wait for a little longer. Makes no sense to upgrade just for the USB Type-C to be honest. I know it's convenient and all but we shouldn't. We'll just have to work with the lightning port as of now. And the second reason why I feel like upgrading is because of the purchase decision that I made two years back. Based on my needs, I think I should have just got the iPhone 13 Pro. That would have made more sense for me. Just because of its zoom lens. The zoom in the iPhone 13 simply sucks to be honest. It's really bad. Not a fan. On the topic of camera, I must say the focus of the iPhone 13 is really great to be honest. Here are a few sample photos I have taken with my iPhone 13 over the years. All of them are unprocessed. Really great stuff. The low light performance was also not bad. I don't really take much selfies but it has a very capable front camera. Also I'm not really a fan of the artificial skin brightening that the iPhone does. I think we can disable that but since I don't really click a lot of selfies, I didn't have to turn that off. It's able to shoot videos at 4K at 60fps. It also has those slow-mo and cinematic modes and they work great to be honest. Here are a few sample videos again. And here is a fully zoomed video when I attended a MotoGP race the previous year. That is what I was talking about. The zoom is really bad. I should have just got the Pro version instead. Next time surely. And also the 60Hz display it has, unlike the Pro variant. The average user won't really be facing any issues. But once you get used to the 120Hz refresh rate, there is no going back. And if you have been enjoying this video so far, then I'd really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button. It will basically help me feed my puppy. I've been using it with the official MagSafe case. The quality of the case is so, so bad. Just take a look at all the scuffings. But it feels good to grip actually. But yeah, the build quality is really bad. My white iPhone now looks a little bit yellowish. Time is the only culprit over here. I just have a small cuffing on the left hand side. Talking about the display, the screen is really bright. I've faced no issues using it in bright daylight. I didn't game much on this device but I know it's very capable of running heavyweight games. Without any lags and stutters of course. On the entertainment side of things, you can watch your favorite series and stuff. The display is great to be honest. Browsing Instagram and X won't be an issue at all. The face ID still works great. I haven't really faced any issues where it wasn't able to recognize my face. It works totally fine. Overall in my use case, I think I can pretty much use my 
my iPhone 13 for a couple of years more and then I can finally get the iPhone 17 Pro. If I become super rich before then, then I might upgrade earlier as well but said life. Let me know your thoughts on the iPhone 13 in 2024 in the comments down below. And now if you'd like to check the best apps for your iPhone that will help you stay productive, then click here. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I hope to see you there.